Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I'm back for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery and we're working on my piece that is honouring the fabulous Superb Fairy Wren. So there's a previous episode where I talk you through why I've taken the Superb Fairy Wren as my inspiration um, and where I was starting to lay out the background which is comprised of little bits of um, scrap fabric, um, mostly from the charm pack of the Moda um, Bleu de France um, range which I absolutely adore with the beautiful yeah, flowers and feathers and birds um, so subsequent to that I have stitched um, down the background I've stitched down my printed um, fabric piece I've started um, doing a bit of stitching on the nest here and today I'm thinking I'll do some further stitching on the nest with you um, I'll do some stitching of the bird over here the superb fairy wren um, and if we have time we can also start to stitch into the background so all I've done at this stage um, is I use some Yoohoo glue just to tack down my pieces of fabric um, and then I've done some stitching just with cotton around the outside so ultimately this is going to be folded around a piece of card like this because these are going to be standing up um, pages so the outer bit won't be seen because that will be folded under and anchored to the other other side and so I did stitching around the outside which will be in that folded in piece um, and then I stitched around um, here and I just used a regular sewing cotton I think it was this one um, so just lots of lots of little small stitches um, and likewise I think I just used a light blue for around the the outside I've also added some embellishments on I might bring you down at this stage and we can then look at it um, in a bit closer up so I added um, this, I had this little scrap of um, off a doily where I think I'd cut out the centre little piece um, and I put a suffix puff in the centre but elongated both of them out so they almost look like an egg. I've got this lovely braid here. Um, I've got this little bird stamp here. Got a feather, another feather. Um, because the story um, talks about how the birds teach their um, little baby birds while they're still in the egg um, a secret code, I've put um, a piece of music, um, which I think this one was tea dyed. Got another feather over here. Um, yeah, and another little piece of ribbon there. I've left the original um, fabric um, showing through here. But the other thing I discovered, and let me just put my light on so you can see it as well, is um, that the underlying fabric was, and let me pull you up a bit because I think you're a bit too close. The underlying fabric was shining sort of through the piece when I was holding it up. And so what I've decided to do is do little stitches around um, following where the leaf design from underneath is. Um, and outlining that, um, not stitching over the text, so just stitching between where the, the font is. Um, and likewise with the nest, I had put some stitches in, but that will be covered by the, the nest when we sort of fully stitch it. But I just love that it will almost look like there's an imprint left on the page from maybe having a leaf or something in the book. And then the person with this field notes journal um, has then gone and um, stitched um, and written over the over the top of it so I just like that it kind of adds those adds those layers and I love that it references the the fabric underneath so it's one of those sort of happy accidents um, that I think uh, yeah inspires you to just take your work in a particular direction I like not having it predetermined just seeing what takes takes my fancy so really it's just a different ver version of canther stitching it's almost like a decorative canther stitching so just those little running stitches but following um, the actual underlying design so I'll finish doing that because there's another um, another leaf up that way and another leaf over here another leaf over here another leaf over there so a few more leaves now let's just get it a bit straighter so I've been using this big old um, ball of, and I don't even know what type it is. I don't know if it, it's an acrylic nylon. So it's quite old. I've got it. I'm pretty sure this one either from the reverse art truck or from the Embroiderers Guild D-Stash. I'm not sure which. But we can do a bit more of the nest. I'll show you how I was doing that one. I might use... 
which needle I want to use. That one's probably a bit too fine. Might need to use this one, I think. Because it's got the bobbles on it, um, it needs a sort of a bigger, bigger head on the needle. Actually, I'll just tie a knot in the end of it rather than sliding the knot down. So I hope you're having a lovely day. I hope you're, if, you're if you're taking part in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery project, hopefully you're having as much fun as I am. And so this nest, um, and I've actually got a picture on my phone as well. Let me just get that up as well. Because it shows the sort of elongated oval shape of the nest. Um, I was also just having a look at what the bronze um, cuckoo looks like because that's what's actually in the actual little nest over here. So I've um, done that in thread. Um, but that's what the nest, it's quite oval. It's got a little hole in the top and it's sort of got grass and sticks. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm going to evoke here. I just wanted to see what they actually look like in a photo. And so I'll be using this sort of bobbly yarn for the nest. And I'm just doing sort of long and short stitches just to sort of start to add the texture in and then I'll come over the top with the sort of grassy, grassy pieces. That's the plan. I say with the bobbles it does tend to make a bit more noise as you're pulling it through. Probably shouldn't be using such a long piece either. Just bunching up a little bit at the back but I'll, I'll sort that out. I might shorten it down. I probably yeah, don't need don't need that length in a single piece. Just take that bit off. A bit more of a decent, decent length. It's like when you're using wools, it should really just be from the tips of your fingers to your elbow is a good length. Oops, what have we got there? There we go. to remember that the grasses will sort of extend right up over the, the piece. That was a very noisy car going by. I think they thought they were driving on a racetrack down the street. Yeah. Got a knotty bit, always the way. What's happened here? There we go. always the challenge when you've got something that's a bit more textural it will be a little bit more trouble to to work with but often it's worth it so yeah for this I started just outlining the little um, hole of the nest where the little bird is poking its head through and the outside of the nest and then I figured I can come through and fill it in and then come and lay the grass sort of stitches over the over the top But yeah, I do like the I like the look of this, I think. It's got a nice sort of yeah, sticky, grassy look to it. It's that sort of bobbliness that adds to the adds to the texture. I don't think I need to fill in the entire sort of surface of it, um, just sort of some spread out bits. And I have to remember not to sort of pull it too tight because then it loses a bit of its a bit of its bobbliness. I've got both ends caught in it. I want 
the little lengths to sort of cross over each other at some points because yeah they would be sort of layering up the the bits of dried grass or stick so I've been also working on my texture border for my other piece so I will come back in a separate video and give you an update on that I just love how that is coming along these projects are just so much fun I tell you it was I started the video before so I can't remember what I um, said before I had to stop it and restart it um, but it's Monday evening here so I hope you had a lovely lovely weekend hopefully it was relaxing we're still in our sort of wintry wintry weather so that makes good time for stitching so fascinating all the like you sort of think of a, a bird's nest being that typical sort of bird's nest shape but then to yeah to see ones like this that are very different almost like a, a sort of a cocoon suspended in the branch nature is remarkable I'm just doing sort of interspersed um, stitches so just starting a stitch off not that far from where it finished finished off so they kind of get all at different levels they don't look particularly sort of ordered putting some on a bit more of an angle having some that sort of yeah cross cross over each other Again, this is very relaxing, like like felting, like punch needling. It's that repetitive move that just lulls you, lulls you in. Hopefully, it's not too boring. I just want to get this, um, yeah, get this nest done with you. Then we can put the grasses on, and then we can go up and do some thread painting on the bird. And then, if we've got time, we can do some stitching into the background as well. I don't want to sort of obscure um, these prints, but I want to do some decorative stitching around the outside of them, I think, which will just help to hold them as well. I think because it's quite bobbly, I can afford to do some longer stitches as well. If it's not looping inside. Um, because even if it does end up sort of sitting up a bit from the piece, that all that all adds to the texture. I think this thread thread tends to lose. Oops, it's broken here. So I'll just take that last bit out. Yeah, it definitely does get some wear going through the the linen, but that's okay. Take that one off. Get a fresh piece of it so much of this but it's good when I do do the um, the punch needle work with it I can use a fair bit in a go probably not my preferred thing to stitch with but I do like the texture so you sometimes just make those little compromises don't you
I could couch it down as well, but that would probably take longer. And it's not totally painful to work with. I think also if I do these longer ones, but then actually um, sort of cross them over each other a bit, then that will help to hold them too. just looked up into my lights that I used to light by surface so I just blinded myself for a moment. I was just checking they were both both on. Travis is having some quality cuddle time with his dad. This Alex again has been out. He'll be out for the rest of this week doing doing his top secret thing that I said I'll tell you about after it's after it's done. Not that, not that exciting, but always good, so that is good. I've had a little cough, but I think it's almost like one of those sort of irritating um, allergy coughs or maybe a little sort of bit of asthma. I do need to at some point get tested to see if I get a bit of asthma. So I have this weird thing after I have a cold drink, like with a meal, that I get this little sort of cough. And there is a version of asthma that's a cold-induced asthma. So at some point I've got to, got to catch up on all those medical sort of things that you need to, need to get checked out. Make a list and <laughs> work through them with a the doctor. I just think because it's been sort of, yeah, I've been focused on, first of all, on Alex's health. And I probably have just put my health a little bit to the the side and then dad had his um yeah his complications but he's doing well just keep working through what's yeah what's happening there for him and hopefully we get some good answers they had mum and dad had a like a medical report i think from his yeah from the hospital the surgeon but they just said oh we just we don't know what it's actually telling us i was like talk to you talk to the gp or i think he's got an appointment back at um, the hospital that he was at with the doctor that was looking after him there. So I said, ask, ask lots of questions. Because it was something about what heart condition he was having while he was in hospital. So, and it's not a term that he's yeah, come across so far with his cardiologist. So. I like I like how this is looking. I don't think I would have got the same effect just with a regular sort of um, cotton. I like I like that it's rough and textural. But yeah, if you do have a tricky thread like this, it is good to use a slightly bigger um, eyed needle, one for threading it, but two just to help sort of ease it through the fabric by creating a bigger bigger hole. This area up here. As I say, I can always come back and fill in any areas after I've sort of added the grass if I think anything's looking too too bare. That's pretty good. I'll just put a few cross ones across here, I think. has broken again towards the top of it. Which is probably a sign that it's 
ready to finish that bit off. Okay, let's attach that on the back. It's always fascinating seeing what pattern you make on the back when you're stitching. You often think it will look a bit different than, than it actually does when you turn it over. One's down here, that one over there. Now for our grass, I was thinking I quite like this green. Yep, that's going to be my preferred. I think these these two would be too bright. Yes, so I should put those away, but I won't. I'll put them away afterwards in my tray. Okay, I think I can swap needles to a smaller one. grass has got a bit of a bend on it so I don't know if I'm going to have to put a little couching stitch on it to kind of get that bendy effect we shall see oops didn't get that knot to hold on that one there we go. So it starts down as low as here and then, for example, that one's meant to kind of extend up over here, I think. So I probably just need to put a little stitch in the middle to get it to kind of bend. So I'll just catch the thread with my needle coming through. And just couch, go back down through the same hole with my thread going over that first stitch. And then pull it tight and that will give me that sort of little bend. It's not 100% curvy, but if I want a bit more curve, I can put another little couching stitch in up here. So I'm just going to take my needle under the thread to hook it and then go back in through the same, same hole like that. So that just gives it a bit more, bit more bend. Otherwise, I can do it, but I just don't think it will look as good if I do sort of single stitches. So I think I will just stick with stick with the couching stitches and see how that goes. Hopefully, you can see. Hopefully, I'm not going going off camera. And I'll bring quite a few stitches in, so probably now I can actually just... Oops, have I... Yes, I've managed to catch something at the back, but that's okay. I'm just going to um, ignore that. I'll just tie that into a loop. Cut that off. And continue on. Just sort of get lots of grassy stitches in and then I'm sure it won't won't matter anyway. I can even probably do some without couching. And then I have to remember that they were extending up from here up into the, the nest. it out because I am doing these longer stitches I don't want it to kind of pull the fabric tight I'm even quite relaxed if the grasses themselves are a bit a little bit looser because they could be sort of sitting more loosely on the nest but again I'll probably end up doing some stitches that sort of come come across anyway and that will 
hold them in place. one across the other stitch it's amazing when you start and when you first start sometimes things look yeah a bit a little bit a little bit dodgy well not dodgy but just not kind of not having the effect that you thought they would but once you start getting that massing of things it all just comes together so always have faith sort of just keep if you think things look a little bit odd just keep keep going and i'm sure you'll get to a point where you're like ah and worst case if you don't once you've done done all the stitches just yeah take them out or add something else on or work out work out what um yeah what it is that it's missing and Maybe it's just a few little tweaking stitches or maybe it's going to take your project in a different direction. Each thing is just something that um, facilitates the next design choice. A bit like being able to see the, um, the leaf design from the fabric at the back just sort of yeah sent me on that path of thinking oh maybe I'll do decorative stitching that mirrors this. Or follows it really, not mirror. This mirror is like a mirror image, isn't it? I think I'll do a few bits poking out the back too. diagonal bring a few up on the diagonal this way as well just flattening it out where was my last stitch because I like to try, can't try and sort of pop back up near to where my last stitch was Very clever how they kind of camouflage their nests with um, yeah the grasses, like the the greener grass atop the more sort of dried grass. I think someone asked me in the comments if I've seen one of these nests, and I'm not sure if I have. I've seen something similar, but I don't know for sure if it was a superb fairy wren. I've definitely seen the, the fairy wrens themselves, but maybe just not the nest. And maybe that's because they are so well well camouflaged and maybe built away from sort of walking tracks and things and I'm very careful as well I would never go close close to a nest just because some birds will leave their young although in this case the young might be one of the the cuckoos good I can always come in and do do some more some more bits and pieces just a couple of diagonal ones over here Doing some of those diagonal ones just to help help hold it all hold it all nice, but I think that's pretty good. Sometimes it's good just to kind of leave it for a bit, come back to it, and see whether you think you need to add anything. And then 
we can move on to our superb fairy wren up the top. So, and I will when I've kind of yeah finished this, give it another quick iron just to get everything to sit nice and nice and flat. Although I don't want my nylon, I'll have to just put a little cloth over it. But yeah, I think that's I think that's really sweet. Just give me a closer up look at it as well. great love how textural it is but let's move on to our little superb fairy wren so I was thinking will I use this this bright I think I will it's nice so it's quite vivid on on this little design down here this one I think I put a bit of an um because I needed to blend it in with the background in canvas so I put a little sort of transparency over the top of it a bit of tint so that's probably softened the colors a bit but that's okay coming with the brighter brighter colors Going through quite a few layers here, but that's okay. Oh, I just noticed I've got a little um, feather charm over on my desk. I think I had that from when I was making my little uh, my little large um, fabric container that had a bird sort of theme to the end section of it. I might just do little individual, sometimes I do like feathery stitches, but I might do those on the chest up here. I might just do individual little stitches as the feathers. always intersperse these with another colour. Again, it's just getting that massing of stitches. When you first start out, it will look strange, but then as the stitches sort of come to fill an area, it starts to look good. So then I'll come down and do this area down on the bird's cheek. You could do your feather stitches absolutely tiny, but I don't want mine to be so, so tiny that you can't, can't see them. And this is quite a thin, thin thread, almost like a sewing cotton, I think, but it's, I don't know if it's, it's an orophil one. the number on it number 40 I think that's the weight of it I think that was the same as this one yeah same as that one that I used to do my other little bird outline With my feathers I just did little stitches around the outside which helped to also sort of get it to fringe a bit which is great. It's good when the process of stitching helps you achieve the, the texture you want.
So yeah, I like I like the effect that's giving. I feel like I've almost lost the little eye of the bird, so I might need to come back and work on that. do sort of more I'll just do some slightly longer stitches here sort of just working out which way would the feathers be flowing a navy sort of colour there and in fact the tails are a darker colour although they do seem to have a bit of bit of light on them so I'll have to just double check what they are just gonna have a look at superb fairy wren tail can't really see that on that also got my bird books I could have got that out but oh yeah sort of navy but I think I can bring in but yeah definitely that bit of them is quite quite blue but maybe I'll bring a bit of this into the tail as well but then maybe go over it with the navy sometimes nice to mix a few colors just to give that more sort of dimensional effect and also because feathers often have that sort of like um, what's it called where the sort of color flashes multiple colors iridescence is that what I'm after I was obsessed at one stage when I was growing up with like iridescent um, eyeshadows that you'd put on. They'd look one colour in the pan and you'd put them on and they'd be like a white that flashes purple or something. Not that I was ever one really that much into, into makeup, but I thought they were pretty cool. Okay, uh, maybe one more. As I say, I can add some stitches over the top of this to soften it down a bit. Okay. My oat jar is overflowing again. Some people say they don't get enough oats to like make my oat um, oat baubles, but I have no trouble ending up with lots of oughts. I might use this rather than the navy, it's just got a little bit more, a little bit more colour to it. It's a bit of a brighter blue. Do I'll do the tail first. Seeing we're on the tail, we'll we'll finish the tail off. I guess the tail should be going all the way, all the way down to here. Again, I don't mind if my tail kind of stands a bit off the piece so I don't feel like I need to couch them down. I just need to make sure I don't pull them so tight that they make the piece pucker.
Yeah, I like that it's got that other blue underneath it. I think that's just giving it some beautiful dimension. Hopefully you can see that. So yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty super. I might just put one more stitch in towards the outside or one more there maybe. It's quite nice working even though this um, this fabric that you print on it's got a little bit of stiffness to it but it's actually really nice to do the thread painting into so because I've got that just sitting nicely oh that's weird my knot didn't go all the way through I'm just going to anchor that down Then we can do the front. Now let me just have another look at my birch for inspiration. So yeah, that's that sort of darker bluey, almost black, and then a sort of a grey. Yeah, so just little, little tufty, little tufty bits. Now, what have I done with my thread? I might try doing my little lazy daisy or chain stitch. Which will I do? Maybe I'll do chain stitch. Pulled it through, didn't I? Normally I'd be getting my head right above this so I can see where I'm putting the stitches in, but we'll have to see how I go. I don't want to pull them too tight either because I do still want them to look like little little feathers. Maybe I don't need to make them quite as small. Just leave them a little. doing the typical way where you do it all in one movement just because it is on the slightly stiffer bit of multiple layers of fabric. So I'm just sort of forming my loop first and then popping up in the middle of that loop and finishing pulling through. And you might look at it at this point and go, doesn't that look a little bit, a little bit floopy? But keep going. So I'll anchor that one down there. And then I'll pop up here and do another little, little row at the side here. I 
I doing this? No, it's not going to work. We'll just have, definitely have to keep doing them as little single stabby stitches, individual movements. But hopefully you're just stitching away too, so... Just got my leftover cup of um, green tea, which I probably shouldn't drink at this time of night. I mean, it's only eight o'clock or something, but try not to have any caffeine before bed. Just had it there in case I got my tickle in my throat. Hopefully those of you in warmer climes, you're through your sort of cold and cold and flu weather, but there's so many bugs going around. Seems at any given point in our exec team at the moment, someone, someone's off, off ill. I think this will leave a nice effect at the end, even though it takes a bit more bit more time just because of the going through multiple layers. Oops, it's a bit too big. It's going to let my thread sort of untangle by, um, well, not untangle, but sort of untwist, take a bit of the twistiness out of itself. For the head, I'll just do the little dashy sort of strokes for the for that area between the two brighter blue bits. For the eye, I might just um, stitch, just tie this off. So I do feel like I'm about to lose the eye, and probably once I do some further stitches around, I might lose where the eye is. So I'm just feeling like I might need a bit of black and a little bit of white, and see if I can get a decent bird's eye. Bird's eye. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe a little bit of white and then a little bit of black. I don't know if you meant to do the which one first. But 
looks like on the design there is a little bit of white just about there Just put a little bit more and then put a bit of black with it. Don't know whether I'm just aware by the time I do um, all the stitching around the eye, we might just kind of lose it a bit. So I might even just do just do a little knot there. Why do we always get knots where we don't want them? <laughs> Sometimes they... Maybe it's the piece saying enough already with the white. <laughs> don't get carried away, Christine. Oops, now we've got a knot on the front, which we definitely don't want. That's not going to work. We might just have to... We've got a real mess there now, haven't we? Oh, goodness. That is an absolute thing. I can get that messy bit of the knot off and then hopefully, hopefully the other bit will stay. I think it will, particularly if I come over and just um, put a little, a little black, black centre. Double width of black, but that's okay. I might just do a single little Yep, I think that's fine as an eye As I say I can always always come back if I need to For the head, we said that was going to be the nice navy, navy slightly brighter blue. And I'll just do some short little interspersed stitches, just like a running stitch, but just more randomly, or a little seed stitch, I guess, single seed stitch. like I also need to do the beak probably should have done that but I might do that just in a dark brown I think
quite a petite little bird this one. I could have made my life easier and done a larger bird, but I quite like the little sketchy sizes on these ones where I have the writing, but then my other piece, for example, is mainly the image of the birds and the, the beautiful textural border. Again, it's just giving that little suggestion of feathers by the little stitches. I think I'll do um, some more little uh, chain stitch for the the chest because it's a bit more of a grey it's not a pure white so I'll kind of have to pick out a colour that's going to be a good good match for that For the feathers down here, I think I'll do longer sort of um, lazy daisy stitches. So I can show you some of those actually because I think they're quite nice. Similar to what I was doing on the tail really. So that's probably enough for that little head area. I can still come back and do a few more if I think it needs it. Let me just show you the brownie. And it is a brown. The wings are a brown. So I will use... Got a lovely rich brown, but I'm not sure if it will be too much, or I've got a variegated browny blacky colour that might be actually quite good, I think. Got this one. That could do the trick. Why do I keep doing dodgy, dodgy knots? Okay, we're going to take that knot and we'll give it a go. Otherwise, it'll be, it'll be at the hour mark and I won't have shown you the, the wings. Oops, pulled through. I'm just going to do like uh, chain, the start of a chain stitch, but we're just going to be doing a single stitch at a time and I'll bring it all the way down to the end of the wing, pop up through the middle of the loop and pull it through and then you get that nice little longer feather look. But I'll probably do some shorter feathers as well mixed in, but I'll just get a few of these longer ones done. do this one actually and then let you let you go but I will be back in another another video probably my next one will be um, the texture piece um, with the rose robin but then uh, I'll come back and show you how I am going with um, this one and I'll have this little bird um, thread thread painted um, and then we can yeah um, potentially do some stitching into the background but that's how it's looking. You might even get to see on the cover of the video if I get this done before it sort of um, loads. I'll put a picture of, um, yeah, of that possibly as the cover. But yeah, great, great fun. Love the nest. Um, and I hope you're having fun. I hope you've taken some inspiration from this. And I will speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>